Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Next Gen Planners podcast. My name is Amelia Hamilton, and I am your head of community here at Next Gen Planners. And today, on this episode of the Next Gen Planners podcast, I am very, very happy to be joined by uh, Joe Faith. So, welcome to the podcast, Joe. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Of course, yeah. And you occupy a really interesting um, space in in the world of um, financial services and beyond. Um, but before we get in, in into um, all the intricacies of what you do, if we could just start by kicking things off uh, by you describing what a day in your life looks like uh, to give people a little bit of an idea of, of what it is that you do. Sure, no worries. Um, well, yep, yeah, I'm um, I'm a copywriter who specialises in helping financial brands, advisors, planners and coaches uh, attract more ideal clients through their copy and content. Um, I run my own business, Joe Faith Copywriting. Um, so my day is, well, it starts with uh, dragging my three young kids out the door, getting rid of them, getting them to school. And then it's very much split between client work and marketing my own business because uh, as a solopreneur or business owner I have to do all that as well which I'm sure lots of people will be uh, familiar with um, and I'm a big believer that you know however many clients you've got how many leads you've got coming through that funnel uh, you should always be marketing yourself because you don't know when those leads are going to dry up um, and you don't know when those clients are going to disappear so I try and split my day probably 60 40 between client work and marketing my own business Interesting. And how long have you been uh, doing this role in this position as a, I like the term solopreneur, that sounds, <laughs> it's yeah. great, you're out there doing your own thing. Um, yeah, how, how long has that been um, your life for? So I set up my own thing um, in November 2021. So just, I suppose, just over two years, two and a half years ago. Before that, I was a financial journalist. So I spent 15 years writing about um, everything from tax and investment to financial planning, financial advice, all the way through to personal finance. Um, and so that was my life for 15 years. Um, COVID came around, three young children came into the mix and I felt like doing something different. Um, and so I retrained and moved into a lot of copywriting. Yeah. And so from the side of being a financial journalist, did you see things um, in ways people were promoting their businesses and their firms that you thought, oh, there's there's a real gap here that that I feel like I could help with and 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 push business forward? Is is this where that kind of idea to retrain and, and move into the copywriting space started? Yeah, absolutely. I think what I saw a lot of was businesses overcomplicating things um you know a lot of what financial businesses financial advisors do is complicated um, and it is complex um and but the way that you market your business doesn't need to be complicated and actually it shouldn't be because at the end of the day the people you're marketing to need things to be explained to them in a very simple concise straightforward way so i did see lots of missed opportunities um a lot of jargon filled content a lot of jargon filled websites um and that was one of the things that kind of pushed me into doing this this work nice well that leads us very nicely into to digging a bit deeper into the world of copywriting what people are doing right wrong what we need to be looking at um in the world of financial services and marketing um businesses and individuals so you mentioned a few uh, mistakes there are, are those the most common mistakes you see when you're looking at website copy um to you know financial businesses yeah so i think when it comes to website copy specifically there are a couple of things that i see quite frequently um that are kind of uh, i would say mistakes um the first is companies and brands not explaining what they do right front and center at the top of their website. So um, you might call it a headline and we call it a hero statement. It's the thing that you see as soon as you click on a website, that first line. 
Um, and frequently I go onto websites and it says, welcome to insert business name. And in my opinion, that is a massive no-no. You are missing a huge opportunity. So you have about 10 seconds on average to get people's attention when they hit your, your homepage, your website. And if you're just saying, welcome to business name, you're missing out, you're missing a trick. What you need to be doing is hitting them quite hard with who you are, who, what you do, who you do it for, and why you are the solution to their problem. So that's probably my biggest pet peeve when it comes to, uh, you know, and this isn't just for financial brands, this is across the board, but I think it does happen a lot in the financial world. That would be my biggest one. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it's not something that I feel like there's an instinct in us to to kind of get people bedded in and settle in, you know, welcome in now, you know, read through at your own pace and, and, and get to know what we do. But actually, if people don't have the attention span for that, and you're not articulating well, what they're there for and how you can be of use to them then I guess you're not keeping them for very long and, and they're not going to go through and, and read however beautifully designed your website is. They're not going to explore all the different tabs. It's it's that initial kind of what are you you hitting them with? Um, are there any uh, things that you think people really need to include? Like what kind of language is it that um, that works? Is it better to be kind of quite blunt or do you need uh, something that's a little bit more... Um, soft yeah how how would you kind of go about starting that process yeah I think with your hero statement it's not a place to be creative um you need to be incredibly clear and concise and blunt in in what you're doing and what you're selling um you know people who are looking for say a financial planner are going to be looking around maybe comparing uh, a few that they've had recommendations of maybe people have said you know, they've got three or four recommendations, they're doing some research before they make a decision. They're not going to spend hours of their day reading your beautifully created prose of your website. They want to know straight away what it is that you do and how you can help them. So if, for instance, you have um, a niche, you're an industry in, within an industry, perhaps you only advise um doctors and people in the medical profession, or self-employed women, whatever it is, then say it, say that upfront, right at the top of the website. Don't leave it to halfway down, because people won't get there. Imagine when you read um, a newspaper article or a magazine article, that headline, the job of that headline is to draw you in and encourage you to read the rest of the article. If that headline is weak or boring, or doesn't appeal to your reader, they're just gonna move on. And it's the same thing with your website. If you are not appealing to your audience, your target audience, they will move on. So yeah, I definitely think being blunt, being clear, being concise and being brief, you don't need the these hero statements to be too long. Amazing, some brilliant practical advice there for everybody um, out there. And you mentioned that, you know, it's about the, the individual, they want to know what it is you can do for them and I guess there's um, perhaps an idea that the that the website is to focus on the business and to focus on uh, on what it outlines and what it does but really we should be shifting focus towards the person that is going to be reading that web website rather or, or wherever they found it whatever copy they're they're reading it's for this person rather than for the company. Um, could you expand a bit about what that might look like and, and why that would be important? Yeah, absolutely. This is another of my pet hates is when you go onto a website and you just hit with lists of services or products, um, at, you know, hundreds of different, well, hundreds, but several different services. It's all about what we can do for you. This is what we are, we do this. At the end of the day, your user, the person visiting your website, wants to know how you can help them. People want to know how service providers can help them. So an easy win is to make your copy more you-centric. Uh, so talking about how um, you know your services can help that client. Uh, for example, uh, if you 
create investment portfolios for clients. You could say in your website copy, I create investment portfolios or I build investment portfolios for my clients. But what happens if you spun it around and said, you know, if you'd like to retire earlier or you want to build a nest egg for your children, we can do that by helping you build an investment portfolio. So you're, it's subtle and it's not overcomplicating, but you're just changing the focus so that when that user comes onto the website or that potential client comes onto the website, they can say, hold on, this is exactly what I need. You're talking to me. You get me. You understand me. I trust you. And this, and then they're less interested with how it's going to be done. They just want to know that you understand what they need. So scrap the lists of services, scrap the products, you know, include them, but make sure you're talking not just about features, you're talking about the benefits as well. Absolutely. And that is such a, a brilliant way of, of kind of looking at how you entice people in without pushing them, without this kind of hard sell of this is what we do, this is what we can get, this is how we can help you. It's going, well, if you are this person, we can do this. If you're this person, we can do this. And inevitably, that's going to, you know, people are going to, that's going to resonate with people. Um, and so that makes so much sense um, as a as an approach to um to kind of draw people in and so if you kind of get to a point where people are interested and and they think that that you might be right for them how do you then move that through to a kind of call to action what does the pipeline look like in terms of copy where you've gone you've identified this person they they resonate with you and your company and and they think yes this is right for me what can you do with copy to kind of translate that into an actual client? Yeah. So you've hit on a really important point, which is call to actions. Um, a lot of the time I go onto people's websites, businesses' websites, and I don't even see a single call to action until I scroll right down to the bottom. And there's a tiny little button that says, contact us. There are so many other things you can do with call to actions you can dot them around firstly you can dot them around your website you can have them higher up um but but, but the the whole point of a call to action is you're guiding your potential client or your user on a journey through your website so you might start on the home page and you have to think right where do i want them to go next maybe you want them to go to your services page because you have very specific services and you want them to discover more about them tell them to go to the services page don't make them have to guess don't make them have to wonder where next guide them with a very clear very concise very prominent call to action call to actions are another place not to be creative be be concise and be clear make sure that you're telling them you're signposting them you're telling them this is where you need to go next then maybe you want them to go to your about page you want them to learn more about you as a business owner as a founder Uh, the about page is actually the second most read web page after the home page because once somebody knows that they like the sound of what you do they want to know who it is they're buying into and even a big brand even a big multinational brand you know your about page is really important it will talk about your missions and your value your mission and your values and what you stand for and um what how you got to where you got to so use those call to action strategically use them intentionally don't just stick one at the bottom and hope for the best yeah absolutely and i think that that's a you know we kind of assume people will will make their own decisions and and they'll inevitably kind of go to that contact button and and do it but as humans we do need a bit of pushing don't we we need to be instructed as to okay well no this is how you get find this this is where you do this and the easier that is um I'm sure that translates into the more people you then have using those call to actions and kind of coming through to the business absolutely yeah you want to you want to make it easy like that's it what you want your website to make it easy for them to become a client don't if if at any point there is friction they're just going to go they'll just go elsewhere to your competition anywhere else just make it easy and you know my advice always to my clients is you know we do testing so give your website over before it goes live to somebody 
who doesn't know anything about your product or your service, but potentially might do, let them play around on the website, let them move around and let them tell you where it got a bit difficult or where you weren't sure or where it wasn't clear. Um, you know, webs- I say this to my clients all the time, your website isn't a static thing, it's iterative. You change it all the time as you evolve as a business. But that can also be me because your clients change or the way that you want your clients to uh, get in touch with you or the, what you want your clients to do might change. So, you know, it, revisiting and making sure that the user experience is one that makes sense and that is easy is really important. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so my next question for you then is one that is a huge topic at the moment and um, remains a word at the front of everybody's mouth and that is AI and the way that that is being used and its fast growth rapid evolution is something that applies to a lot of different areas of financial planning. Now AI for copywriting is something that's being employed more and more and more it clearly has its drawbacks as well as its benefits. I want to ask, what's your position about using AI? Would you advise it, not advise it? Um, and what, yeah, what do you think about um, when companies employ it effectively or not effectively at all? Okay, right. Well, this is a big one. Um, AI has a place. I use it myself um, within my own processes, um, but I use it very strategically and I use it intentionally and I use it for research and I use it to analyze my research. But that's as far as I go really with it. AI does have a place for sure. If you want a website, a very kind of vanilla holding page website, AI can do that for you right? You can put in, I want a homepage, this is my business, and you will come up with, it will come up with incredibly generic copy that may be the exact copy that appears on 15 of your competitors' websites. The difference with using uh, a copywriter, hiring a professional copywriter, is the process. So, in, in my opinion, having you might if you're going to have a website and you're going to invest in a website, it should be a good website. It should do the job you need it to do, which is to resonate with your target audience, talk to them, appeal to their, uh, uh, address their questions, address their object- objections. Um, and the way that I do that, and a lot of other copywriters do that, is by having a very strict process, which involves research, research and um digging really into your business and your audience so one thing you won't get with ai is that deep deep research that you would get and one big part of my process is client interviews so what i do is i talk to my clients clients um and i find out i i with all my packages i kind of i include four to five client interviews and i ask them questions like why did you choose this client, this company? Um, What nearly stopped you? What objections did you have? What did you get out of working with them? Um, And I also get some really good testimonials when I do these interviews that my client can then use on their website and throughout their marketing. But what you get there is you get copy that when people read it, they think, wow, you are inside my head, you understand what I need, and I believe that you can help me. So I think it very much depends on the stage you are in your business and how much you're prepared to invest. Your website is your online shop front. I mean, you probably know when you go and buy something or you go to a restaurant and go to a hairdresser's or whatever it is, the first thing you do is go to the website. You want to check out that they're a legit business. You want to check out that they, you know, they're trustworthy, that they're credible, that they're, they're ticking all the boxes, that they actually know what they're talking about. So if you think of your website as that shop front that is working for you 24 7 365 days a year it's important it's a really important marketing asset so in my opinion it's worth putting the work and the investment into it to create something that's actually really good and it doesn't look like you're 
competitor's website. But if you are starting out on day one and the best you can do is, is you know, use AI to create something and then I think something is better than nothing. Um, I'm actually working with a client at the moment, um, an investment client who started off with an AI generated website and it wasn't doing it, what it needed to do. It was very much a welcome to, insert business name. It was fine for kind of a holding website, but they're really growing and they're really getting way more sophisticated clients and they need a website that is going to reflect that. And that's why they brought me on. Yeah. And I think it's such a key point there you've you've made about that real like personalization and making it um so true to you and and who you are and reflective of that because i i kind of asked that question with the um mindset now of you go online you go on social media and it's so obvious who's used ai to come up with the copy because it will generate as you said some but fine it will be generic, it will be phrased in a certain way, and it says kind of what you need to say, but nothing more. There, there isn't that kind of emotional pull, there's not that personal angle. Um, and so I think something that in a lot of different ways sh- can be implemented to, to streamline efficiency and to, to be able to um, create a, a lot of content in, in a shorter amount of time. And, and I think it definitely has a huge place in, in many different areas. But when you're really, as you said, looking at, okay, but if I want this to reflect me, if I want this to be um, very accurate and um, appropriate as to what I do and who I'm doing it for, then I think AI misses a trick, doesn't it? It doesn't have the insights that human to human contact provides. And it's that kind of human to human understanding that I think AI can never replace and why a job like financial planning in itself will be safe because, you know, a person can't talk to a chatbot in the same way that uh, they can talk to a person who understands, well, this is why you behave this way towards money. This is why you want to save. This is why you don't want to do X, Y, Z. Absolutely. And I think that's important because financial planning is, it's so crucial to, to elicit trust and to build trust. You know, you're, you're dealing with people's finances, their money. It's really important that they can trust you, understand what drives you and know that you're a legitimate, credible person. Um, so in, in all industries, I, I definitely think that it's important that there's a, the human side of the brand comes out, but arguably in the financial planning, financial advice world, it's more important. And, you know, from my own personal experience dealing with financial planners, I want to know that, that they are, uh, you know, they're credible and they, they're trustworthy. And you're not going to get that from a very generic piece of copy or content that's been that's come from chat GBT. Yeah, definitely. And trust is such a key word in in this uh, area, in this industry. Um, and it's so important to build that and to maintain that throughout a relationship when you are writing website copy what are some of the things you want to bear in mind to make sure that you are building trust that you you have that um you're already starting that relationship for them from the moment they click on on your website yeah there's some really kind of quick wins that you can make when it comes to kind of trust builders on your website the first is testimonials um uh, having kind of juicy Killer testimonials all through your website, not just on your homepage, but every kind of touch point you can think of is really important. But you can also be strategic with your testimonials. So if you think that there's going to be a point of friction, for instance, price, then you can strategically place a testimonial that will kind of hit back and be like, we'll address that objection. Um, but testimonials are really important that it's obvious it goes to show that you've done what you've done you say you do before you have happy and satisfied clients um other ways of uh, eliciting trust is to 
you, if you are a kind of a bigger organization and you work for other businesses to showcase those businesses, include their logos on your website, show who has trusted you. So if you have big name clients and they're happy for you to include their logos on your website, do it. Um, the other thing, other things you could do is include case studies. Um, obviously they're a bit longer, but again, really important. So if you've helped somebody, um, with life insurance, for instance, you could tell their story within a case study, how you helped them and the outcome um, and how it's, kind of, it's improved their life. And then finally, things like members, it, it probably sounds a bit obvious, but being member, being member of an industry organization, any awards you've won, put that on your website. Show people that you are well respected and that you take, it, take what you do seriously. Yeah, for sure. And so you kind of go in there into um, some areas where the text might be longer, justifiably so, because it might be a case study or, or you know, a, um, a testimonial that, that isn't punchy and quick to the point and, and nor necessarily should it be. So if we're kind of moving away from this um, uh, front page that is saying what you do and and appealing to the the right people and they're clicking through and you've got space for uh case studies testimonials what would you do when you have kind of a bulk amount of text like that how do you display it how do you go about kind of setting that up where would you put it um so that it isn't um too kind of affronting just a a page full of words for someone to wade through yeah so remember it's it's really important to remember that no one wants to read streams and streams of of copy so if you're hit on a website with a, a bulk lot of text you might just not bother reading it we need to make it easy for the reader or for the user to read what we're writing so my number one tip is do not be afraid of white space you do not have to fill every part of your web page in fact, white space is your friend. It makes reading the text, reading the copy way easier for your user. So that would be my first point. Break up your paragraphs, use white space, don't be afraid of it. Um, the second thing is use subheads. So again, going back to the point I made about reading a newspaper article or a magazine article, when we first pick up an article, we will read the headline. If we like the headline, we might skim read the subheads um, and see if we and that they'll encourage us to read more so you can apply the same principle to your website copy break up the text but then break it up into subheadings so that people can find what they need quickly and easily um, other things you can do lists include bullet points i mean it sounds straightforward but people don't do it if you've got a list of things that you offer bullet point it it makes it so much easier to read and then finally make your sentences short don't, you don't need long, complex sentences that people are going to tire of reading. This isn't uh, an A-level English paper. You know, you're not going to be marked up or down on the complexity of your sentence structure. You want to make this easy for your reader. And the, easy, the, the way to make it easier is to break up your sentences, make them short, make them to the point, cut the fluff, cut the adjectives, cut all the stuff that isn't important and just get to the point. Absolutely. Some amazing practical tips um, you've shared with, uh, with us through, throughout this that they sound um, so simple and, and effective on the one hand and, and, and yet, you know, it's a lot to think about and there's so, so much there to, to kind of remember. I just want to kind of round off this conversation with some practical kind of case studies, some things that you can perhaps share with us of where you've taken one of your clients from one space and and where you've you've ended up any kind of success stories or um any kind of website copy that you felt really has made a um a significant impact to to someone you've been uh helping yeah so the, the one that i suppose springs to mind the most is um i'm working with at the moment and it's just launched um a junior, a junior ISA provider. And they were very clear that they wanted to appeal to kind of the everyday person, not the most sophisticated investors. And their copy was 
very, very stilted. It was very jargon filled. It was, it was boring. You know, at the end of the day, if you're setting up a junior ISA for your child, you you need to understand what you're doing. You need to understand how it's being done. So we took the website from what I call a brochure website, which is, um, this is what we do. This is what you need to know. It was full of acronyms, FSCS this, ISA that, um, FCA this, um, you know, annual allowances, you know, stuff that is everyday language to people who are in the world of finance and financial advice. But for the everyday person, they don't know, they don't know what to, they don't know what a JISA is. I mean, the website you was referring to a JISA. We assume everyone knows what a JISA is. People do not know what a JISA is. They don't even really know what an ISA is. So we really broke it down. We didn't break it down too much that we were patronizing and that we were kind of dumbing it down. We were just we we explained and we made it clear and it's gone live and the feedback's been brilliant and they're getting their their product is an app and they're getting great downloads on their app and the whole the whole tone of the website reflects their brand it's a fun young inclusive brand and the website now reflects that And it feels and looks different to every other junior ISA provider out there. And that's why they're getting the traction they are. Amazing. I mean, it sounds it sounds really, really cool. And I'm so glad that um, we've been able to to have this chat about all of this stuff, because I think it's there's so many other areas um, within financial planning that uh, that we talk about. And and this is one that definitely shouldn't be overlooked at all. And you've given so much um, of your wisdom and advice. But before I move on to the last two questions we like to ask everybody, I just wondered if you could, if there was just one thing that you think is most important um, that that people listening to this walk away with that that is in their minds moving forward, looking at how they write copy and and what they should um, be thinking about. If there was, yeah, one or two things that you think are the most important um, things to bear in mind. Okay, so the, the first thing when it comes to website copy specifically is just make sure that you are promoting what you do, your USP, your secret source, whatever you want to call it, clearly to the people that you want to attract don't make it difficult tell them you everyone has their own unique selling proposition everyone does things their own special specific way tell people about it the other thing gen, more general with copy and content because i also write blogs and newsletters for companies is be consistent and show up don't just write one blog or a newsletter and forget about it and three months later write another one and expect to gain traction show up consistently with good stuff stuff that's going to resonate and you'll you'll see the results amazing well thank you so much for for that for those incredible tips and tricks for people to use um so Moving on then to the final two questions we ask everybody who comes on the podcast. Um, And the first one of that is about a book. So we like to ask people, is there a particular book that's helped you in your career, either personally, professionally? Um, Yeah, is there a book you could share with us? So from a professional point of view, the one I go to time and time again is a book called um, Finding the Right Message by Jen Havis. So it's specifically about website messaging how you discover the right messaging and it's all about interviewing customers finding out what they they really what drove them to you um messaging is so important um getting the right message is so crucial to businesses so i go back to that book time and time again um but i'm also a podcast addict so i'm kind of going to cheat a little bit on your question because Please there are do, quite yeah. a few podcasts that I am obsessed with podcasts Um, and there are two or three that I continually go back to from a professional point of view. Um, If marketing is something that you want to know more about and you're really into, then there's a web, there's a um, 